do we stop there? When I asked a person in America, that why are you putting a full stop? But Brother Zakir, the situation is such we can't continue. What is the city? Who are you afraid of? I live in Bombay, mashallah, a city and a country which we know that I know that the life is very danger. But Allah is there who gives. I mean, I've got no bodyguards in Bombay. No bodyguards. Allah is, mashallah, there to protect me. Alhamdulillah. And why do you put a full stop where there's no full stop? Why? More people have been killed in Afghanistan than in bomb blast. More people have been killed in Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction. Did you find it? No. So why? So why are you keeping quiet? Who are you afraid of? Why? In the same breath, we have to condemn it. No, but the time is not right. What the time is not right? So we have to realize what is wrong has to be condemned. What happened in Gujarat has to be condemned. And if the people were responsible for any evil act, if you catch that person and punish him, no problem. You can't catch an innocent person. If someone has killed in Gujarat, you do a bomb blast in Bombay. Why? Because the same community. Islam doesn't permit that. Imagine those innocent people who have been killed in the bomb blast in Bombay or London or New York. Those innocent people, their relatives, they'll become permanent enemies of those people who have done this. Point to be noted. I am not telling you Muslims have done it. Huh? There's no proof. I've got no proof that Bin Laden has done it. I, yet, yet the British government has not found out who did the London bomb blast. Yet no one knows who did the Bombay bomb blast. So I'm not telling you Muslims have done it. Anyone who has done it, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, has to be condemned. A true Muslim, a true Muslim who believes and submits his will to Allah will never do that. Then if someone is caught with a Muslim name, he may be a pseudo-Muslim, may having be a name Abdullah, Sultan, Zakir, Muhammad, that's a different question. If it happens to be whether he is a Muslim or non-Muslim, he has to be condemned. If suppose, imagine, if suppose certain Muslims think it is right, the, the, the relatives of the thousands of innocent people who have been killed, they'll become permanent enemies of Islam. How can we condone it? It's haram. What wrong have they done? What wrong have the people who were traveling in the trains in Bombay have done? The people who were there in the marketplace or in the tube where the bomb blast took place in London, what wrong did they do? If you really can catch the culprit and punish him, no problem, do it. If you can't do it, then don't kill innocent people. Islam does not agree with that. Similarly, when I was asked the question, when I had gone to Australia, <clears throat> that's after 9-11, I think it was 2002, and the Consul General of America, based in Perth, he asked me the question, that do you consider, the talk was, jihad and terrorism, an Islamic perspective. He asked me, do you consider Osama bin Laden to be a terrorist? I said, see, I don't know Osama bin Laden. I haven't met him. He's not my friend also, he's not my enemy also. If I have to go what the media says, BBC and CNN, the Quran says in Surah Ujurat, chapter 49, verse number 6, whenever you get a message, check it up before you transfer it to the next person. I can't believe what BBC and CNN is saying. So I don't know whether Bin Laden is good or bad. I don't know whether Al-Qaeda exists or not. And I gave a talk, is terrorism a Muslim monopoly in Birmingham, NEC? And there I've told that if you go to the US site, U.S. Department of Justice on Info, please, if you go on that site. There are many terrorist organizations, more than 50% are Muslims, out of which Ulfa, India, had done 749 attacks in the last 16 years. More than any other terrorist organization, that organization is not mentioned there. Why? Al-Qaeda has mentioned 28 attacks, all suspects, none proved. Ulfa, 749 attacks, all proven. That is not there on their side. So we should realize that what is surely we know. I know for sure. If I have to call who is the terrorist number one, I told that four years back, that number one terrorist is George Bush. <laughs> we know for sure the thousands of people he killed in Afghanistan, the thousands of people killed in Iraq. We know that. And that time it came in headlines in newspaper in Australia. Dr. Zakir Naik calls himself a fundamentalist and calls, doctor, calls George Bush terrorist, number one. Headlines. Now it is common. Every Tom, Dick and Harry is calling George Bush a terrorist. <laughs> that time it was new. Now you read the papers, 
every Tom, Dick and Harry. And there was a survey done just a few months ago that they give three options. Number one, Osama bin Laden. Number two, Saddam Hussein. Number three, George Bush. Who is terrorist number one? And do you know the person who took everyone lock, stock and barrel, maximum voting went to George Bush. Non-Muslim, non-Muslim, non-Muslims. The survey was in different parts of the world and the least rating he got was 73%. Highest he got was 78%. He won the elections of terrorists. So now, so now it is nothing great. Now every Tom, Dick and Harry is calling because they have known. Even the non-Muslims, even the Americans, they realize everything is a gimmick. So who did it, I don't know. But if you ask me the question, whoever did it, some people say it's an inside job. Whoever did it, whoever did this act, these acts should be condemned. We cannot kill innocent people. So you have to realize that whoever is telling that these acts are correct, they are totally against the Quran and Sunnah. Ask them for proof. No way the Quran says. If the culprit is caught and if he's punished, that's fine. <clears throat> but you can't kill innocent people. <clears throat> I'm still receiving many questions uh, on slips from the sister's side. Uh, let me remind them that if they want their question to be answered by Dr. Zakir, then you have to come on the mic and ask questions. Please, sisters, come on the mic and ask questions. Thank you. Maybe the next question from the sister. has the question that in an ideal Islamic school, should we even teach about the country, about the national activity, about national history, about the freedom fight, and how are we coping in IS? As far as the general answer is concerned, that in an Islamic school, we should even talk about the country. There's no problem at all. We can talk about the laws of the country, we can talk the rules and regulation of the country, but, but, we have to realize that number one, our allegiance goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not go against the country unless the law of the country goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the law of the country does not go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to follow each and every law of the country. As far as India is concerned, I am aware that there is not a single rule in the constitution of India which forces any Muslim to do any haram activity. Neither does it prohibit you to, from doing anything which is farth. For example, the Indian government doesn't say that drinking alcohol is fard. Optional. So they don't force you to do anything which is haram. Neither do they prohibit you to do something which is fard. Salah is allowed. In fact, they have a separate Muslim personal law. So I would say that among the non-Muslim countries in the world, I would put India to be among the top. One of the best countries where non-Muslim can live. I may disagree with certain policies. But a Muslim can be a very good, so I say, I'm a very good Muslim as well as a very good practicing Indian. But if any law of any country, whether it be India, whether it be UK, USA, Singapore, if it contradicts with the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more.